Hi guys, and welcome back to episode 31 of the Carla Garrick Show. I'm so delighted to be beaming back into your homes and right here on YouTube or Sensor Free Odyssey. Uh, since last week, I need to do some updates. There's been a lot going on in the free state and somehow we seem to have made a lot of people mad. We've got secession, we've got mean tweets, we've got woke churches, we've got the New Hampshire magazine saying, we're not that bad. Um, so this week, we're just going to go through some things coming up in the news. And the first item, you'll recall from last week, we had that hearing at the Ballot Law Commission over in Concord at the State Archives. So what happened? All right. So for folks who maybe missed the story, a real-life Karen filed a complaint with the Ballot Commission of New Hampshire to say that several legislators who put in a bill to declare independence from the union uh, should not even be able to run for office. Now, that clearly seems to be a, a sort of slippery slope. So what happened? So this lady basically put in a petition to disqualify from election 14 representatives who supported CACR 32. So what was that and why should we be concerned? So basically CACR 32, which is a constitutional amendment, basically said it was this long, it would go on the ballot if it actually passed the House, and all it said was providing that the state peaceably declares independence from the United States and proceeds as a foreign nation. So that probably does sound a little scary to some of you, but here's the thing. If we believe in, in a democratic republic, then why can't we introduce bills and say, hey, this is what we think, what do you guys think? What is a constitutional amendment? A constitutional amendment actually has an incredibly high bar that it has to meet. So it has to pass the legislature by 60%, right? And that's in both houses. That's both the House with their 400 reps and the Senate with their 24 reps. And then, of course, the governor can decide to sign it or not sign it. But if it passes with the veto-proof majority, it doesn't really matter. Because it's a constitutional amendment, that actually then means if it passes the House, so if it passes the 60%, then it goes on the ballot. And then you and I, our neighbors, our friends, and every single Granite Stater who votes can then decide, yes, I want to stay with the union, or no, I'm pro-independence. For that to actually pass, it has to make 67%. So as a first pass, it's 60%. As the next pass, it's 67%. So those are incredibly high bars. So when you hear people saying things like, oh, this is crazy, this is dangerous, this is, in the words of our real life Karen, insurrection and rebellion, let me remind you, it really isn't any of those things. If we can support pro-independence and self-determination in other countries, why can't we support it or at least explore it here in New Hampshire? So the ballot commission, quite rightly, listened to Karen put forward her ideas, and then they unanimously, every single person on the ballot law commission was said, this is not something that should be heard here. This, they were unanimous in saying that they lacked the jurisdiction to stop candidates from being on the ballot. Karen was entirely wrong. This was not the place to do it. The reason we put people on a ballot that you and I, our friends and neighbors, and every Granite Stater who votes can vote on is to decide who we want representing us. And we're so, so lucky in New Hampshire because we actually have a pretty representative government. You know, our House, which has 400 members, is the third largest House in the world, in the English-speaking world. We're lucky. Each one of our reps, and I'm running for office, as all of you know, I'm running as a Republican here in Ward 11 in Manchester. But, you know, um, 
all our representatives represent about 3,200 people. That is incredibly lucky. We're lucky that we know our names, we know our phone numbers, we can call and talk to our reps and really let them know what we think. So I can't think of a better place than New Hampshire for us to have this conversation about whether we should stay part of the uh, union. The cool thing that came out of this ballot commission hearing was uh, besides the unanimous decision where they said unanimously, we do not have the jurisdiction to do this. We also heard from the AG's office. And this was really important because the rumblings, when people don't like an idea, they sometimes like overswing on how they're trying to create. Uh, correct, right? So people are like, we think this is a dangerous idea. So we're just going to throw around terms. So the terms they're throwing around are things like insurrection, rebellion, traitor. Um, so like nasty words, that no one really enemies, enemies of the state. Um, and so the AG, uh, this was Kevin Skura, was actually on record. And he said, Insurrection and rebellion does not relate to words, i.e. we can put in bills, we can talk about these ideas, we can have the dialogue to figure out what makes sense for us as Granite Staters together. But insurrection and rebellion, which is what Karen said these actions were, um, this is not it. He the AG's office is categorically on record saying that insurrection and rebellion involve the use of violence. And I'm really glad to hear that because we shouldn't be silencing voices. What we should be doing is we should legitimately be talking about these issues. I came to the decision about independence because I think the federal government is entirely immoral, unethical, and unfixable. I mean, people have been trying and trying and trying for how long? Our energy costs are up. The dollar is worth literally 99, it's lost 99% of its value. Uh, we're in all these unconstitutional wars where hundreds of people are being, millions, actually millions of people are being murdered. So there's a lot of conversation that can happen around this issue, including looking at what the federal government is doing, and their appetite for reform is non-existent. So the question becomes, what else can we do? I'm solution-based, so this is sort of the roadmap I've come up with, is to ask everyone in the state of New Hampshire, does this make sense? Yes or no? Let's have the conversation. Let's have that dialogue about that issue. Now, here's the reason I think that they don't want to have the conversation. I serve on the board for the Foundation of New Hampshire Independence. That is a 501c3 recognized, federally recognized nonprofit. So the IRS did not think our ideas came to a level of insurrection or rebellion. The IRS in fact was said, hey, you're allowed to go talk about these ideas to other people. We commissioned, the uh, foundation commissioned an official survey recently. And here's what came out of that survey. 63% trust the New Hampshire of Granite Staters, 63% of respondents in the poll, trust New Hampshire state government over the federal government. So we all agree the state government is at least better than the federal government. 29% um, of respondents in this official survey supported secession today. So let's just make it around 30. So we're going to say 30% without even having a conversation of people support secession today. Here is an interesting data point. 52% of Republicans who, were, who responded to this survey said they would secede today. So I posit that the reason no one wants to have this conversation is that people are afraid, the people who make their money from politics and from the federal government are afraid to have this conversation because they may not like the answer. Because maybe average Granite Staters feel more like I do and many of my friends do. Um, 
something I did find heartening because I come in peace. I will always come in peace. That is where I'm coming from. I want to make the world better because of love, not hate. Um, only 3% of respondents supported the use of violence against um, secessionists. And I find that heartening, and I hope that number will even go down. Here's the reality, folks. If we can't talk about ideas just openly and honestly with free speech, with mitigating, oh, this is a good point, oh, that's a good point, well, no, I don't agree with you here, Carla, or show me the economic benefits, or why should we do it? As long as we have the conversation, we will all win. When one side is silenced, or one side is called traitors, or one side is told that they're violent when they're not, that is problematic. So I hope you will come with me on this journey, and I hope you enjoyed that quick little update on what happened last week at the Ballot Law Commission. So this morning I was sitting on the porch and uh, reading the New Hampshire magazine where I subscribe and, you know, I like me some UFO stories and some alien stuff. So Area 603 UFO encounters, paranormal activities and other odd happenings caught my eye. And then lo and behold, as I was paging through the magazine, I found a little article about the Free State Project. And so I thought I would read it to you guys. So here we go. The project proceeds. Subtitle, this might be the year when New Hampshire begins to understand what the Free State Project means. 20 years ago, then Governor Craig Benson welcomed to his state house office with open arms a group of self-described ideologues with an interesting idea. Politically, they were libertarians who believed in an extreme form of limited government. As a political movement, they have been around for a long time, but grew frustrated that very few of their members would get elected to anything. This, of course, is referring to the Libertarian Party. So what if, as one Yale PhD student offered, a group of devoted libertarians decided to all move to one state and have enough numbers to create a libertarian utopia? They called it the Free State Project, and by the time they selected New Hampshire for this venue, Benson and most of New Hampshire's Republicans generally felt that this in-migration would be good for them in their races against Democrats, who were slowly making the state more competitive during election time. For the two decades since, two things are true. First, the Free State Project came nowhere near their goal of 20,000 people moving to the Granite State in the effort. Second, free staters, as they, known, as they are known, have been widely successful in their takeover of the Republican-led legislature, where they've worked to decouple the relationship between public dollars and public schools in favor of more dollars going to private schools. More importantly is what they've done in local politics this year. Indeed, 2022 might be the year when New Hampshire began to understand what the Free State Project means in reality and not just in the abstract. Two episodes so far this year serve as an important harbinger for the future of how life is lived if Free Staters have their way. The Spring and Croydon, members of the Free State Movement, proposed and ultimately passed a budget that slashed the school budget in half without any discussion before the meeting. Town residents, most of whom didn't attend the annual town meeting, so they didn't show up, but they were seething. They then organized and found a way to overturn that decision, which required half which required over half of the town to show up. The next situation in Gunstock over the summer. Last winter, Gunstock in Guilford was once again one of the most successful ski, ski facilities of its size anywhere in the country. Uniquely, however, Gunstock is owned by the residents of Belknap County. Under the system of government, the county's delegation to the New Hampshire House of Representatives then appoints five members to a Gunstock Area Commission. Everyone 
in these positions are Republicans, and the leaders are free state aligned. One, in fact, backed the idea of New Hampshire seceding from the United States. Over the summer, this commission swung away from its oversight role as a professional manage as the professional management team on the mountain to a more political activist role. All management of Gunstock quit one night in the middle of an audit. Um, all management of Gunstock quit in one night. Gunstock closed for two weeks. Only after tremendous pressure from the community did a key commission member resign. Not a free stater, by the way. Um, and the management of the mountain came back to their jobs. To be clear, everything that the Free State Project members, we're participants, we don't have members, have done in the above examples is absolutely legal and done through the proper methods. Further, other than the sneaky budget proposal in Croydon, I, we can quibble if it was sneaky, Free Staters have been very upfront with who they are, why they moved to the state, and what they want to do in power. They're not hiding. We are not hiding. But also, I do want to comment on some of the things that were said here. First of all, it's very suspicious to me that everyone is hitting the same notes. So, Gunstock, again, watch last week's episode, episode 30, um, where I lay it out. Uh, Free Staters getting blamed for all kinds of other people's crap, but also the management team quit in the middle of an audit. The audit isn't final. The things that came out in the audit was that Governor Sununu was receiving contributions to his political campaigns from Gunstock. Not only does Governor Sununu also own a ski resort, but uh, if it is owned by the citizens of Belknap, I don't think the ski resort should be writing checks to any political candidates. So, mm, went super quiet and strangely don't hear that part of the story about gun stock now, do we? Now, with regard to Croydon, as it is stated in this article, everything was done above board. Everything was done democratically. It was done at the town hall meeting. You know what, folks? If you don't show up, you got to shut up. So come so that we can have the conversations, but please do not pretend like anything was untoward in any of this that was going on. I also want to mention that, yes, while 20,000 people did not show up, we now have a massive aligned group of granite staters. So some are free staters who moved. Some are like me who have lived here for like 14 years. It's my forever home. Uh, you know, I'm in it to win it, as they say. And, um, and you know, just aligned live free or die people, the granite staters of New Hampshire, right? And so we are, um, so we didn't need the 20,000. Look what we've accomplished with the six to 7,000 who've moved here already and the alliance. Now, something that happens at the state house that no one wants to talk about, we only have 30, 40 elected free staters currently serving, uh, but there is a large Liberty Caucus. Why? Because Granite staters actually value liberty. Like, and all of us can see that it is going away, that we have an issue that liberty is in the decline and that we have to stand together to stop this march of both socialism, which will lead to communism, which will lead to a decline of our lifestyles and of our lives. Liberty is worth fighting for, guys, and that is why I am here. All right, so other things that were in this article is... Um, you know, we, we, we're not hiding, yep, and uh, again, you know, we were sort of welcomed here. So I find it interesting that everyone seems to be uh, coming after us real hard, and, uh, and I think that's probably an indication that we are starting to make a real impact and that we should see that uh, 
as a positive. Of course, my mission will always be to um, have the conversations, to figure out what people need, um, to make sure that we aren't stealing from Peter to pay for Paul, because when we do that, you know what? Paul will always continue to steal. So we really have to be mindful. I believe that you are the best steward of your money. I think we should leave as much money in the pockets of ordinary granite staters to spend as you see fit. I think we should all be minding our own business. And so when you hear these negative things about free staters, I would like you to remember three things. One is every single free stater is an individual. Therefore, judge them according to what their actions are. Two, um, we come in peace. Uh, every free stater subscribes, and libertarianism itself subscribes to the non-aggression principle. That is an ethical stance. You can go look it up. The non-aggression principle says that we aren't supposed to aggress against nonviolent people and that we include the government in that. So the government can't force you to do things against your will, including things like forcing you to get jabbed in order to keep your job. Um, and then finally, every free stater should be judged on their own merits alone. And please know that uh, I am a free stater, but I also am only here to help us all live free and thrive. All right. So finally, I want to talk about some mean tweets. Yes. The orange man was deplatformed, but I'm not talking about his mean tweets. Oh, I'm talking about the LPNH, and that would be the Libertarian Party of New Hampshire. Full disclosure, I am a Republican. I run first as a Republican. I have run as a fusion candidate, which is a unique thing in New Hampshire. Um, where you can be on both ballots. I regard myself as a Ron Paulian, so a, or a Rand Paul, or a Amash kind of uh, Republican. So small L libertarian, big L libertarian is for the Libertarian Party. So Libertarian Party has been making some mean tweets. I will tell you when I'm on Twitter and I'm literally cringing, it's... Uh, it's not a great day in Carla land, but be that as it may, um, I think we should talk about um, what happened. So on the anniversary of John McCain's death, the LPNH tweeted out a very tasteless tweet uh, showing his daughter, Meghan McCain, uh, crying over the casket and the, the heading was um, happy holidays. Yes, cringeworthy, gross. I would never have done it. Um, it's not tasteful. It's not, I, I believe in the golden rule. So I kind of feel like you should treat people like you want to be treated. Um, I do think that's a tenet of libertarianism. Be that as it may, it was done. And then it sort of erupted into this furor. So uh, let's start with, this is on uh, today, Wednesday, August 31st, uh, union leader, you can see the headline above the fold, meaning, you know, people are, are, are want this to get attention, meaning the media also understands that free staters are the story. We're the most interesting thing happening in the state because everyone else is stuck in their loops, in their simulations with their dumb ideas that we can prove don't work because here we are, folks. So people have to be open to trying new things. So this headline says, Sununu, McQueen, tweet should be the end of the Libertarian Party in New Hampshire. Now that seems like a bit of an overswing. Maybe you could have just said, eh, don't do mean tweets. Uh, but no, you actually had to declare that you think the party that might be nipping at your heels a little bit is, uh, should, should be ended because of this. Now, just a little bit of background. In 2020, when uh, Governor Sununu uh, abused his emergency powers to lock down the state of New Hampshire and declare the people who vote for him non-essential, um, the Libertarian Party has to go door to door in order to get ballot access. So they have to get petitions every year in order to even get on the ballot. Why? Because the duopoly, the left, right, who pretend like they're, you know, 
the, on separate sides, but the famous Indian saying is there, it's the left wing and the right wing of the same bird, and that bird is statism. So they have to go door to door to get petition signatures. In 2020, when we were all told we're not allowed to go door to door, the LP actually asked the governor, hey, would you waive the, 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 the signatures because we have this quandary, right? Like we're either trying to like obey your silly uh, orders or, you know, we're in a situation. And the governor said, why would I help you? You are, uh, you know, basically my competition. Why would I help my competition? So that's where we are. So, you know, free staters are in this weird situation where the Republican Party needs us. That article from the New Hampshire magazine that I read earlier clearly states it. New Hampshire started trending more as a blue state. And when we came in 20 years ago, we basically saved the, the Republican Party. We are the youngest people in any room in the Republicans. I know I'm an old gray hair, but trust me, I'm like the young one. And everyone who we're bringing up is the, the new blood, the fresh blood, the excited people, the people who go to sign ways, the people who generate the press, the people who tell the stories, the people who are doing stuff. So like it or not, uh, you guys need us. Now, McQu M M McCain, warmongerer, blood on his hands. I don't know if you want to be out there sort of defending that. Uh, the tweet, again, tasteless, not necessary. But I will tell you this. I have been on the phone with the media all week. I have talked to the New Yorker. I've talked to the New York Sun. The Boston Globe was just in my office doing a photo shoot during this podcast because the people are curious about what is going on. Why? Because of things like mean tweets that get people's attention. The reality is that over the weekend when this went out, the LPNH got thousands of new followers. Now, I don't know if those are the followers they want. Again, it's not my party. But I will tell you that being edgy is the way that you get attention. And when you get attention, you're able to discuss your ideas. And so that is kind of what they're trying to do. Now, I'm going to criticize my friends a little too. Here's the thing. You don't always have to lean into the idiotocracy either. You all could have taken that, run with it, learn from it, and then I don't know, let the new cycle carry on. But no, everyone's egos got like super engaged and everyone was like, oh, I'm going to double down now. And so that became sort of problematic because it was unnecessary and it didn't actually serve the goals. When I expressed my criticism, uh, no one actually addressed what I was bringing up, which was tactically, what are you trying to achieve with this? If someone had said tactically, we are trying to get enough attention to get 2000 new followers and we hit that metric, Carla, go away. That would have been fine. But no, everyone was defending uh, the, the, the d defending their decision to attack McCain. And I think that that was not necessary. Now, I will say this. I saw a photo, which I have not verified, to be fair, but the photo was of Megan McLean at her father's graveside, standing with a child behind the gravestone with some flowers at the front and her book perched on like the gravestone. So it's clearly a photo op, mom holding child, father's uh, graveside with her book there. Now, if that photo is real, then I'm sorry, she doesn't have a leg to stand on. Neither do a lot of people who were bombed by her father, I might add. Um, but she, she doesn't she can't complain if she's exploiting his death for her own financial gain and to promote her books. So, you know, let's just keep it all within the context of the world that we all find ourselves in with this weird, strange media landscape. So, um, 
That's it for the Meg McLean mean tweet story. I don't think anything should end any parties. I think we should understand that everyone is just competing for attention. And what I would like to leave you with this week is the following notion. You control your destiny. You can make choices for yourself. You need to be mindful about what you want out of life and where you want to direct your attention. The reason I don't like uh, something like the mean tweets is I want to, and and not only want to, I actively work to uh, live a love forward life. I really try to find the good in life for everyone, including the enemies of liberty who are (laughs) heinous and mean. And honestly, like the phone calls I'm getting and the things people say to me should shock anyone who's decent at all. Um, We should be looking at where we're directing our attention, what kind of world we're trying to manifest. My favorite saying is criticize through creation. So I want to criticize the entire system by creating a better alternative. And that's why I like to more so reflect positive things than negative things. Um, But, you know, Go to my website, carlagarrick.com. You will find all my content. Please like, subscribe, and hit the subscribe button on the YouTube. Add me as a follow me on Odyssey. And um, show me the support so that I can show you guys what we're trying to accomplish here in the Live Free or Die state, where I personally want us all to live free and thrive. Thanks, guys. See you next week.